Hello YouTube world, it is Liam the Deaf Doom Metalhead and I'm doing a brand new collection update today, all CDs because I did a kind of like a quiz thing on my YouTube uh, community tab to kind of see what people wanted to see and the second most voted was the obscure stuff. Now when I started this YouTube channel I kind of wanted to show music that I listened to and this year I've kind of been blindsided a lot by new releases so a lot of the videos are featuring a lot of new stuff because it's all exciting for me because it's all new but I'm kind of slowing down on that now and I want to focus more on filling the holes in my collection and a lot of these CDs today I'm going to show you are ones that I've listened to for years and years and years on various formats like MP3 and you know I used to maybe stream from YouTube in my early days of college but I've managed to pick them up I'm going to show you them but first I will show you a care package I got sent today today the other day from someone who kind of inspired this whole YouTube channel. So the whole reason this YouTube channel exists is because of lockdown, I had nothing to do, and I was in this room a lot, and as you've seen this channel grow and grow and grow, the room has just expanded. And there's one person in particular that kind of gave me the kick up the ass to do it, because I wasn't really up for doing it at first, because I thought I wouldn't be very good at it. And I kind of keep to myself, I don't like to bother people or be the centre of attention. But this guy, I took his words of advice to say do it, He's mentored me ever since, and I'm also a big fan of his band. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Mark G with a C. His name should hopefully pop up here. And his YouTube channel that very similar to mine, I guess, in a way, but he you know he started way before I ever did, so you know he knows what he's doing more than I do. And his taste is the same as mine, and he also plays in a similar style band, but he was part of the birth of say UK Death Doom and the whole scene in general. So you could say he is one of the unsung heroes of that scene because you've got obviously your My Dying Bride, your Paradise Lost, your Anathema but there are Decomposed and Enchantment you know they are massive focal points for that style of music you can't ignore that the time that music came out they are part of it so I'm honored to call him a friend and he also sent me this amazing t-shirt of the new single that's just been released before the new album comes out next year I will obviously leave links below to his Bandcamp and his YouTube channel and social media so you can go check out Mark if you don't know who Mark is. I mean, I imagine everyone knows who Mark is who follows me on YouTube, but if you for some reason don't, or you just found, randomly found this video and have no idea who I'm talking about, go support Mark and his music because they are still sounding like they did from the 90s. And I absolutely love that new single and I'm not just blowing smoke up his ass. I generally, generally did like it way better than the full length that's now played in the background and I'm really, really looking forward to hearing some new music. But not only that, he sent me four CDs, which was completely unnecessary. But if anyone knows Mark, he's such a generous bastard and a lovely bloke. So I will show you these CDs because they are amazing. The first one is some German death metal, but in the Swedish kind of style, which obviously Mark is very much well known for loving the most. It's got that HM2 vibe to it. And bizarrely, I've actually seen this band live before and I forgot all about them until I saw this. and. It, kind of twigged a memory in my head and that is Deserted Fear. Now they formed in 2007 and they have that very similar style to like bands like Revenant Flesh, um, Endseeker, you know those kind of German death metal bands where they have the Swedish sound to a point but then they have this own weird way of doing it that just sounds like German death metal to me. Uh, this is their third full length from 2017. It's such a nice digipack the boys there. It's put out through Century Media, as most German death metal bands are. And yeah, I saw these guys supporting the Roots tour when Eagle and Max did, went on their own and did the whole Cavalera conspiracy, but playing Sepultura albums in there, you know, full. So they did the Roots album, and then Overkill will also support, as well as Insomningham, if you know that band from Finland, I think. But yeah, really, really good album. Really enjoyed this. I mean, I knew I liked them anyway. As soon as I remembered I've seen them live, I remember enjoying them loads. And yeah, so fucking happy to have that because that's the first one from them I've ever owned. Then this is my second Paganizer album I own in my collection. I have the latest one from last year. But this is the seventh full length from Roger Johnson & Co. This one came out in 2009. The band formed in 1998 in Sweden. And Rogger is one of those guys that can literally just pick up a guitar and write a whole album probably within five minutes. The amount of music his name is linked to is insane. The man is a machine. And you could say it's very generic and every Paganizer album sounds pretty much the same and I would probably agree with that. 
but I do enjoy Paganizer. I love just simple, no nonsense death metal, and that's what Paganizer is. You know, it's got chunky riffs, good solos, the productions are always good on his albums. I mean, there's a shitload of tracks on there, and it's a long album for what it actually is. It's not to say it's rubbish, it's just I don't know how he finds the time to write so many riffs. Especially when you've got I mean, 16 tracks for a death metal album is insane. It's not a grind album or nothing like that. They are full death metal songs, three or four minutes long each. So yeah, crazy amount of songs on there, but you know, a really great listen and I you know I love Paganizer. And then he sent me this one, which is a 2020 release, but he said it was too modern sounding for him, and I, I get it. I really enjoyed it though. Band is called Incinerate. These guys are based out of Canada now, but they were an American band, but they've relocated to Canada. Now, this is called whatever that is down there, I can't pronounce that. But this, like I said, came out in 2020 and is very much in the realm of brutal death metal. It's kind of technical, but it's more based off the harshness of the double kick because it's triggered like fuck and it just goes and goes and goes. It's that kind of modern, very polished, very chiseled, will like slice your head off clean kind of death metal. You know, there's no nonsense. Band formed in 1998, and this is their fourth full release. And yeah, a really, really cool album. Again, another band I've never even heard of before. You know, the name Incinerate, it could be anyone, couldn't it? But I was quite surprised he put that in there, because I kind of looked at that and went, ooh. It's so either really, really bad, but then I read the note saying it just wasn't his kind of style of death metal. And I can understand that listening to it. It's very polished, very clean, very clear cut to the point, you know. There's no rawness to it, there's no atmosphere. It's very much precision, I'm gonna fuck you up, death metal, if that makes any sense. And then the last one is probably the most random one, but I really enjoyed this one as well. It is a band that no longer exists. They only did this demo in I think 91 or 92. 91, that's right. And then they called it a day in 92, it became a totally different band. But this is Chicago's Nocturnal Doom with the EP Shades of Despair. This came originally out in 1991, wasn't put out for a label, was done all through the band, and this has since been remastered and put out through Battle Cry Records and Mighty Monster Federation, whatever that is. Apparently there's only 500 copies of this and mine is numbered, but as you can see there, it is not numbered. So, I don't know if that's true or not. But this is a weird and interesting comp because Listening to this, it, they are definitely trying to be Black Sabbath. And being a Chicago band as well, I think they must have been inspired by Trouble listening to it. Because reading my notes here, the band formed in 1987. And then they did the demo in 91. And then in 92, they ditched it and became the band Witchcross, which now exists today. So if you're an American that knows who they are, this is what that band became. Still the same vocalist in Witchcross who was here, Count... William Janik, or Count, yeah, something like that. But yeah, very, very over the top, epic, traditional sounding doom, and I love it. It's just, it's just essentially is Black Sabbath, but with an American style of playing. You know, it's got that, it's got that nod to trouble, and being an EP as well, the production isn't as bad as you'd think it is. It's also got some um, like live cuts and raw cuts, which sound absolutely shit. But, you know, considering the time they were recorded, you know, I'm not surprised. But it's got a full history of the band in the booklet. And yeah, it, it wasn't his thing, apparently, Mark said. It just wasn't his thing. But I'm a bit of a nerd, and you'll see in these kind of CDs I'm about to show you this kind of style of Doom I do actually really enjoy. So yeah, really, really grateful for Mark for sending them. Thank you, mate. You've got a package on your way, as you already know. Um, but yeah, what a legend. So moving on to the collection that I got. And the first one is Sweden's um, answer to Bolt Throw, you could say, and that is Creeping Flesh. This is a comp from a couple of years ago, I think this came out in 2017, and is essentially just their demos from 2014 to 2016 put onto one CD. This was put out through PRC Music, and yeah, love me some Creeping Flesh. They've got a new album coming out next year, which I'm all over. And I gutted that I nearly got to support these guys just before COVID kicked in. When the pandemic hit the UK, they were then about to tour and we were going to support them, me and my band Consecration, and then that kind of all went out the window there and then. So gutted a bit about that, but hopefully they'll come back at some point. But yeah, really, really good band. If you like Bolt Thrower, that kind of vibe, you know, Creeping Flesh, you cannot go wrong with them. 
Now the next two is a America's answer to My Dying Bride, you could say. Been a fan of these ever since I became a fan of My Dying Bride and Paradise Lost, that kind of thing. And when you go on the hunt for more Death Doom, you kind of discover these kind of bands. And the band is November's Doom. This is their second full length, which was put out in uh, 1999, which is called Of Sculptured Ivy and Stone Flowers. I like this one, but it's a bit, yeah. I mean, they've got a lot of albums out now and you could easily do a ranking video of November's Doom, but I don't think many people would be that interested in it. Plus, I need to pick up all the rest because they're really expensive to buy, believe it or not. Uh, this was put out as a reissue through the End Records in 2008. And yeah, really, really good Death Doom band. Paul, the vocalist, Paul Kerr, I think his surname is. He was a really big man and he's lost a lot of weight, so I don't know what all that was about. I don't really know the history, but he was a big bloke. And in some of the earlier videos, you can see he's absolutely massive, and in the newer stuff, he's absolutely tiny. So kudos to him for whatever he did to lose weight. It's amazing the transformation; it looks totally different. But his vocals, I love his vocals. My wife can't stand it; she thinks it's too epic. And when I'm listening to this band, she thinks, "What on earth are you listening to?" Because she hates stuff like King Diamond as well and all that kind of thing. She just doesn't get it at all. And November's Doom mixed the really low guttural growls with a very epic vocals you know it's weird how to explain it because they don't sound like my dying bride or anything like that they have the same kind of riffing patterns and the same kind of vibe to them but they're totally different and i really like them really do like them i doom i also picked up their 2005 album uh the pale horn departure I've been after this for absolutely ages and a guy on ebay was selling it for a five so i absolutely jumped at the chance because these aren't cheap to buy and when you do find them on ebay you have to get them there and then if not you'll be paying at least 15 16 quid per cd which I'm never going to do. So yeah, really, really happy I got this one as well. Now this is a bit more heavier. This one came out in 2005, I think, yeah. And it's a bit more to the point, a bit more on the death metal side of things. You know, it's got some epic kind of doomy numbers and a bit more gothic-y kind of vibe to it as well. But yeah, love me some November's Doom. So if you never check them out, obviously go do that. Another comp that I picked up off eBay, which I'm really, really happy about, is this comp from the band Rune Magic. This is Sweden's Death Doom band, the more of a doomier band these days, but this is a comp of their first three albums all the way through across two discs. And if you know Rune Magic from the early days, they were just pure old school death metal, you know, in the vein of Edge of Sanity, that kind of style. Fucking love it. Uh, band was formed in 1990, and I'll show you the booklet so you've got the Supreme Force of Eternity. So it's got the album artwork and everything in the book with full lyrics. So this one came out in 1998. And then you've also got Enter the Realm of Death from 1999 on there. And then the second disc finishes on Resurrection in Blood, which came out in 2000. Now, I was amazed I found this on eBay and I got it really cheap as well. You know, the booklet's got the full lyrics in there. This is a reissue from Century Media. And what's even cooler is the discs are black, which reminds me of the old PlayStation 1 days when I was a kid. So I really like that as well. But yeah, if you never checked out Room Magic, you know, you cannot go wrong. If you could find this comp, you pretty much saw it, because the, all their music I love, but these three albums on here are absolutely stellar. Proper old school death metal. If you like Edge of Sanity, you know, early um, Bloodbath, that kind of thing, you know, you'll love this. So well worth checking out. Next one is an Italian epic doom band, and the only way I can describe these guys is they sound like you literally are going to battle on horseback. The album is pretty much based in a battlefield in medieval times, or Viking times, I think this is a concept album, this one. But the band is called Doom Sword, and this is the Let the Battle Commence. This is their third release from 2003, the band formed in 97. And it, yeah, it's just over the top epic doom. Very, very, very epic. Fist pumping epic, should we say. You know, you've got the chants, you've got the Man of War kind of vibe going on. You've got the epic Candlemas doom riffing going on. You know, I love all that kind of thing. So, you know, I've been a fan of this band for years and used to have this on my iPad, iPod even back in the day. Found a torrent of this years and years and years ago, maybe 2004, something like that. Um, and yeah been a fan of these guys ever since. Big on the epic 
you know, power chord riffs, a bit chuggy, a bit ploddy. Um, but it is a concept album about some kind of Viking guy who has to battle some invading army. And uh, I think he gets fucked up at the end, I can't really remember. But either way, I mean, it's a brilliant album. If you read the lyrics and there's a story in the booklet about it there, you know, you can really get into it. And I absolutely love this album. The song, Deathbringer, oh no, The Siege, sorry, that, that's my favourite track off here. It literally starts off with some hoarse noises and clanking of armour and that kind of thing, and it goes into this big, epic song. The only downside to this album, as a whole, is they repeat certain riffs too much. So they do a song, it sounds absolutely amazing, and then it kind of starts up again halfway through the song to kind of drag it out for another three or four minutes when they don't really need to. They could have ended the song there and it had been perfect. That's the only criticism of this album and the kind of band's back catalogue because they are pretty much, they're one of those bands that they write a really good song but then they somehow duplicate it and kind of merge the same song in twice. I don't know why they do it because they don't need to. So yeah, Doom Sword, brilliant. Right, this one was a blind buy and I'm not disappointed. Really, really cool album. Well, it's an EP, technically it's two EPs. So this is a Japanese reissue put out through Dead Sky Recordings. The band is an American band called Mourned. You probably can't see that in the packaging, but the EP here is called Devoured Humanity that came out in 2019. And it looks like that. And that is the main reason I bought it in the first place. Looked at the artwork, went, yeah, I'm pretty much gonna like that. And I do, it's very deaf, doomy, hardcore kind of vibe to it. Kind of like, if you like bands like Black Ton, it's got that vibe to it, a bit more on the brutal death metal side of it. But this also features their 2017 EP, which is called Rift Ripper. And that's kind of got kind of more of a hardcore crossover to death metal style. So you've got that kind of, it's very much a hardcore sounding band in that EP with the death metal vibes, whereas this newer EP is purely very, very heavy death metal with the kind of hardcore breakdowns, if you can imagine that. But yeah, a really interesting band. Not a lot of information on them either. If you go on Metal Archives, they're not on there. And their Facebook, there's no history when they formed or anything like that. All I can tell you is they're based out of Massachusetts. And yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Now this one I bought purely on the artwork as well, because I cannot read the band logo. And if you can't either, fair play. But if you can, you know, you know kudos to you. You're well cult. But I ain't got a fucking clue what that says. I don't care who you are. If you're in a band and you spend that much money on getting your merch and all that, and people go, what? You know, no idea. It, I don't know why it's a thing. And there's a lot of bands, like even like um, Blood Incantation, stuff like that, you cannot read their logo or Mortis Theorem. I don't care who you are. I don't know why bands do it. Because to me, you have to be able to read the logo. I mean, I love the music of those bands, but... The logos are ridiculous, and this band are no different. This is Japanese Death Doom band Kandava Ribus. It says it there. But either way, this is a great EP from last year. Four tracks of pummeling, slow, murky, horrible Death Doom in the vein of bands like uh, Coffins, Anatomia. You know, they're no different. You know, Japanese Death Doom band doing pretty much the same thing. And I'm all for it, you know, put out through Dead Sky Recordings as well, same label as one before. Disc looks like that, well shiny. But yeah, Death Doom, Japanese style, what's not to like, eh? Next one is some Funeral Doom from France, that's right, yes. This is Ataraxi with Slow Transcending Agony. This is a reissue, this originally came out in uh, 2005 but I think this one is either a 2020 reissue or 2021 reissue I can't tell you but it came out through Weird Truth Productions this one which is a Japanese uh, I think it's a Japanese one yeah label and if you've never heard of Ataraxi before they are just what you expect from Funeral Doom if you like bands like Evoken, uh, Disembowelment, uh, who else could we say, Esoteric that kind of vibe you know a slow, very, very heavy. And when I first ever heard this album years ago on MP3, the tone on this is spot on. It's very thick, very heavy. Some of their albums are a bit hit and miss for me, but this one, when I found a copy of this, I was all over it. I've been after it for years. 
and you know amazing band very just slow methodical has harmonies underneath it to kind of build the atmosphere so if you're into those you know funeral doom bands that just lay you on with the thick heavy riffs Ataraxi will not let you down and lastly an album that I've been after for years and years and years and I never want to pay loads of money for it and I found it really cheap on eBay straight away picked it up the band is a Swedish epic doom band but they're not candle mass or nothing like that in the vein of it but you know very different they used to be called Forlorn back in the early 90s but then in 2004 they had a complete name change it became this band the band is now called Isol and this is their third full length called Bliss of Solitude this was put out through I think Napalm Records yeah in 2008 now Isol are an interesting band because they sound like Candlemas to a point, very much epic doom, very doomy, but in a more melodic way. So not just plodding along with like Sabbath rip-off riffs or even Candlemas-esque kind of riffs. Their guitar work is more melodic and you have those kind of big open power chords, but it's the harmonies underneath and the vocals because they have amazing vocals. It's very sun in a kind of like a chanty kind of medieval-esque kind of way. I could describe it as they are also uh, they also formed two of the members of this band formed the band Arab Alter if you know them uh, another Swedish obviously Swedish um, doom band but more in the vein of that kind of Viking crusade that kind of vibe this is more big open echoey kind of epic doom but a brilliant album I mean every song on this I absolutely love and it's one of those ones I can hum along and sing along for days really really epic and yeah, if you've never checked them out, this is the best album to check out, and then the one after that is even, you know, just as good, maybe even a little bit better. But I always love this one. The song from Clouded Sky is the first one I ever heard, and I'll obviously leave a link below so you can check it out, because the harmonies on that and the riffing, you know, made me fall in love with the band, and I've been a big fan of theirs ever since. So that is my small but obscure CD collection update for this week. Again, a massive shout out to Mark. G with a C for sending me some killer albums and that t-shirt and also this Friday the 19th of November I will be doing a live stream with the whole band enchantment so if you are in the mood for listening to a load of old blokes and a bearded goon that looks like a pineapple talk about doom death metal metal in general and just having a great laugh really looking forward to it. it'll be nine 30, I think it was we said I'll obviously leave a link to the live stream so you can save it but yeah going to be loads of fun I'm going to talk about their origins what made them tick you know what how the band started why they've reformed because they've been fucking quiet for years and yeah it's just going to be just really chilled out and good laugh and then you know we might try and do some more streams after that if people are into it so until then please consider subscribing if you're whole, new to this whole channel I'll pimp out videos now at you so you can go check out my other content. Please like the video as well to help me, you know, with the YouTube world and the whole algorithm thing. Until then, please take care and I'll speak to you guys in the comment section below. Cheers!